So in the previous video we talked about what is a nucleophile, and in this video I want to talk about what makes something a actually a good nucleophile. So what makes something a good nucleophile? What makes it likely to react, more likely to react than, than another potential nucleophiles? Because it's one thing to say that something's a nucleophile, but we need to be able to actually arrange nucleophiles in order of how reactive they are, and that's what this video is all about. Okay, so first of all, before we sort of get into any more detail, is the fact that nucleophilicity ultimately is measured by rate. Okay, so what determines whether something's a good nucleophile or not is not ultimately a factor of its stability in the sense like acid, acidity and basicity is based on thermodynamics, it's based on equilibria. And nucleophilicity is not based on that at all, actually. It's based on just the rate of the reaction, so the pure rate of how fast these reactions go. So in other words, the faster a reaction happens, the, with a certain reaction happens with a given nucleophile, well, we can say, okay, well, this nucleophile reacted faster than that nucleophile, so therefore it's a better nucleophile, okay? That is how we measure nucleophilicity. So before we go into all these factors, I want to talk about that first. So there's four key factors when it comes to understanding nucleophilicity, and this video will at least try to discuss the first two. And the first important factor is this, is that the conjugate base is always a better nucleophile. So the conjugate base is when you remove a proton from your acid and you're gonna have a negative charge, right? Because you're having a loss of H plus. So let's just think about a really simple example. Water, for instance. Uh, water, if we take a proton away from water, we get OH minus, okay? OH minus, this is the conjugate base of water. So if we take an H plus away, we get OH minus. As it turns out, this is a much better nucleophile than water is. So OH minus is a better nucleophile than water is and, and along the same lines. And you might think actually why this might be. Like why might OH minus be a better nucleophile than water? Well remember what a nucleophile does, right? It donates a pair of electrons to an electrophile. So its ability to donate electrons is gonna mean that it actually has a higher, so here we have a higher electron density. So in other words, more electrons to give away, well it's going to be a better, it's going to be better able to giving electrons away if it has more electrons, right? More electrons to itself, more electron rich. So more electron rich or higher electron density. So if we compare, let's just compare a few other examples. So NH3 compared to NH2, the conjugate base of NH3 is NH2 minus so this is a stronger base than NH3 um, along the same lines. CH4 is, for our purposes, not a nucleophile at all because it just has four sigma bonds attached to it. But if we take a proton away from CH4, then we get CH3 minus. And this is a much better nucleophile than CH4 is. Um, so it's much better able to donate a pair of electrons. So the conjugate base is always a better nucleophile. And this applies across the board. Uh, whatever species you have, if you take a proton away from it, it's going to become a better nucleophile. And therefore, through our definition of nucleophilicity, it's going to be a faster reaction. Okay, so the second main factor, not only are we talking about electron density, but we're going to talk about a periodic trend. So here's a, the number one periodic trend. Okay, nucleophilicity it increases as we go to the left along the periodic table. So it's actually the opposite of electronegativity. So it increases as we go to the left along the periodic table. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take these examples. Let's take these examples of CH3 with a lone pair. So CH3 minus and NH2 
NH2 minus, and OH minus, so three lone pairs there, and F minus. Now, if you remember electronegativity, right? Electronegativity increases as we go up and to the right along the periodic table. So fluoride ion is the most electronegative atom in the periodic table. And as you go to the left, your electronegativity, so fluoride is the most electronegative. Uh, electro negative. And going to the left along the periodic table, we go from fluoride to oxygen to nitrogen to carbon. And carbon of these four is going to be the least electronegative. Okay, makes sense so far. Now, when we think about what nucleophilicity is, it's giving a pair of electrons away, right? Electronegativity is about t drawing electrons towards you. So nucleophilicity in this sense is the opposite of, elect it sort of works in the opposite direction as electronegativity does. So carbon being the least electronegative in this case, CH3 minus would be the most nucleophilic. And fluoride ion, F minus, in this series would be the least nucleophilic. Okay, so CH3, NH2, OH, F. So now this only applies if you actually have a lone pair of electrons to give away. So I wouldn't say the same thing for CH4, for example. CH4 is not a better nucleophile than NH2 minus because it doesn't have a lone pair of electrons to give away, right? So this also works if you go down one of the periodic table. Let's compare chloride ion to SH minus to, let's say, PH2. Again, phosphorus being the least electronegative is going to be the most nucleophilic, more nucleophilic than SH minus, which in turn is going to be more nucleophilic than Cl minus. So as you go to the left the periodic table, the nucleophilicity is going to increase. In the next video, we'll talk about the effect of solvent on nucleophilicity.